we'd like to welcome everybody for joining today. My name is John Gilmissy, and I work in business development at Detroit Engineered Products and also serve as the program manager for Ion Sensing Technologies. I've been supporting product development for about 25 years. In addition to my roles at DEP, I have been federally appointed to Michigan's Export Council, and I also serve on the Legislative Committee for the Aerospace Industry Association of Michigan. Kamal Assad is our Technical Project Manager, and he'll introduce himself as he takes the reins shortly for the technical presentation. DEP has close to 500 employees globally and several technical centers, including our headquarters here in Troy, Michigan. We serve in a Tier 1 role to many OEMs and suppliers, providing concept design, CAE validation, outsourcing, and even prototype support. Being based in Michigan has helped us to secure many close relationships with tooling, machining, fabrication, additive manufacturing, and testing partners, as well as giving us full program support capabilities. DEP is known for our engineering services, our reverse engineering, our FEA support, our on-site contracting, our product development group supporting multiple industries, our ion sensor, which we'll discuss in detail today, and our Meshwork software, which is now in its 18th year of production. Meshworks is a world-class CAD morphing and meshing tool used by, used by about two-thirds of the global passenger car and truck OEM market. In fact, many of our clients have a Meshworks user group that meets monthly to work with DEP to automate CA activities and reduce modeling time significantly. Some of our largest OEM customers tell us we help them save over 10,000 hours per year thanks to Meshworks. So that's a brief introduction to DEP. And if anyone would like this deck emailed, we're happy to send it to you. We would like to keep this webinar a little on the casual side and invite questions at the end of the presentation. Please be sure to use the text box to type a question or raise your hand so we can engage with you at the end of the presentation and also mute, unmute you. So I am sensing now, what has changed? Number one, challenges regarding the masking of the ion signal due to electrical interference has been overcome with patented shielding technologies. There's also no need to drill a hole in the cylinder head thanks to the, to the ability to multi-purpose existing components like spark plugs and glow plugs. There's also no need for on-off switching of plugs to accommodate both the sparking or heating and the acquisition of the ion signal. Also, reduction in costs with newer designs and novel new manufacturing processes. The elimination of challenges due to voltage constraints and ion signal amplification requirements uh, have been a challenge that now exists in the past. And most importantly, a clean and reliable ion signal throughout the entire crank cycle. Attempts to rely on cycle averaging in order to weed out bad data has been employed in the past, but the time this methodology is complete, the suggested algorithm or corrective strategy may no longer be valid to solve the combustion anomaly that happened so many cycles ago. So what about the competition? We know the offerings outside of DEP are very narrow for ion sensing, usually only misfire detection. It's more expensive and often difficult to package. And it may not be able to offer an aftermarket solution as well for existing engines. There's also cost savings opportunities because DEP's ion sensor is a super sensor there may be opportunities to reduce cost or eliminate O2 sensors, NOx sensors, NOx sensors, pressure transducers. There's also the opportunity for after treatment optimization and also to introduce prognostics and condition based maintenance. So I'll do a quick slide and give you 60 seconds on how the ion sensor works before we hand it over to Kamal. Just as the doctor uses an EKG to understand what's going on in your heart, DEP has done the same thing with ion sensing. We're able to acquire this signal that happens during combustion, and we've used a lot of expensive lab equipment to understand what it really means. The way we do this is whenever there's a combustion event, we use either a spark plug or a glow plug to capture this ion sensor. And after the correlations that we've done, we are able to process that using an ion processing unit or 
we expect to embed the chips within the engine control unit. What this allows us to do then is to have a very good idea of what's going on in the engine during combustion because we take both a physics and a chemistry based approach to understanding exactly what's going on during each combustion cycle. And when we do this, we're able to do some very good things such as being able to ensure peak pressure remains as high as it can regardless of the fuel type or the quality of fuel. Plus, we can also provide a lot of diagnostics and engine parameters in real time for each cylinder. So the things that the DEP's ion sensor can accomplish, and Kamal will get into this, would be misfire, pre-ignition reporting, start of combustion, cylinder imbalance, CA50, knock, peak pressure reporting, soot, knocks, enabling multiple fuel types, also enabling compression ignition engines to use gasoline, helping with hybrid engines to better optimize and reduce the controls programming, and several other projects that we have for the next year to year and a half, be it uh, dynamic skip fire anomalies, engine prognostics, driveline torque control, uh, support of the power generation industry, intelligent algorithm controls, and even protecting software tampering. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kamal, who can share his screen and go into the finer details of ion sensing technology. All right. Um, thank you so much, John, for the introduction. Um, this is Kamal Assad. I'm a lead project engineer at Detroit Engineered Products, working on the ion sensing technology. Uh, my role at DEP is um, the design and development of the prototypes of the functional and the production prototypes of the ion sensors, whether if it's uh, gasoline or diesel, and also um, validation and testing of those sensors on uh, different engines. <clears throat> so with that, I would, uh, I would give also a, another brief introduction and then I'll go into the details of how ionization works and uh, some of the exemplary applications that can be um, um, uh, used with the ion sensing technology uh, for both gasoline and diesel engines. So uh, to start with, uh, Let's go with a, a, a brief introduction. So um, the DEP's smart um, combustion measurement system is actually based on ionization signal, which is indicative of the combustion process um, measured with the smart spark plug or a, or a smart glow plug fitted as an exact replacement of a conventional plug. The signal conversion and signal conditioning ensures high resolution combustion ionization current convert it to an output voltage signal, uh, which is available uh, um, uh, through the ion processing unit and can be fed into the engine control unit. And um, this signal, uh, the output voltage range is about 0 to 3.3 volts to enable input into standard signal recorders and ECUs. In addition, uh, there is another um, way to communicate information to engine control unit through um, the FD CAN or CAN bus uh, or Ethernet uh, communication. Uh, DP's engine smart sensors are unique and um, is, is very accurate in measuring combustion ionization signals, providing characteristics of the insulin that combustion flame. And um, um, uh, with that also, the smart sensors and the IPU are at the very relatively low cost uh, for volume production in comparison to uh, other lab equipment such as the uh, incident that can, um, uh, pressure chain solution. So what are the benefits at a glance here uh, of using the ionization system? Our ion uh, processing unit actually supports six smart ion sensors, whether if it's gasoline or diesel, uh, with output signals of raw ion current signal um, from 0 to 3.3 volt available to uh, engine calibrators. Um, signal amplification with auto gain adjusts uh, and adapts the uh, uh, signal for specific engine measurement tasks and engine operating conditions. So um, the signal is auto-corrected. Um, um, that eliminates a lot of um, 
uh, 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 back calculation at the engine controllers and uh, and calibrators. Um, for for spark ignited engines, the smart spark plug is custom made to replace an existing conventional spark plug uh, with available sizes of uh, metric 12, metric 14, and anything above that, metric 18, of course. Um, uh, for uh, compression ignition engines, um, the smart glow plugs are custom made also and um, um, replace existing conventional glow plugs um, that uh, with available sizes of metric 8, 9, 10, 12, and uh, whatever is bigger. Um, ionization system could be used in on a test bed or in a vehicle, um, and it's meant for volume production. Uh, it's not limited to um, research facilities and lab uh, tests only. Um, it can provide both um, uh, standalone operation where you, where you can measure all the ionization signals and report all the information to the engine control unit, and also could be used for active feedback control, as we are going to see in some of the applications. Um, the IPU capability of reporting cycle by cycle data in real time, and uh, and, um, and also is able to send all the rows ionization signal or voltages um, um, with combustion parameters such as start of combustion, end of combustion combustion duration, and lot, a lot more information about the combustion. Again, all the information are available um, um, on the CAN bus um, or um, FD CAN or Ethernet. And there is also an, um, an interface software that was developed specifically to uh, see or visualize the ion current signal on a cycle-by-cycle -cycle basis uh, as it as it is available on the CAN bus or any other uh, communication protocol. So with that, I would like to give a, a brief introduction about ionization, how it happens inside the combustion chamber. Basically, uh, if there is no flame inside the combustion or uh, combustion chamber or there is no combustion events detected, there will be no ionization events um, and there will be no signal to report. But whenever combustion happens, the energy um, released by the air-fuel mixture would actually ionize the species contributing into the combustion. And uh, during this, there would be a lot of energy released and a lot of electrons that are produced um, and um, a lot of positive ions that are left uh, behind. And uh, um, this, um, um, when there is a voltage potential actually that is, um, 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 applied across an electrically insulating probe within the combustion chamber and the engine block, electrons get attracted to the positively charged probe, while the ions um, uh, uh, get attracted, the ions get attra attracted to the nearby engine grounded components. This movement of electrons and ions produces an electrical current. Um, so had this current been um, uh, flowing through a uh, resistance with a known value, ionization current measurement would be possible, which provides more information about the combustion. So by dual purposing an existing uh, uh, glow plug or a spark plug for um, a gasoline or diesel engine, um, more information about the combustion could be obtained, and um, yet there is no need to drill another hole to put another sensor um, to measure in-cylinder combustion and report to the engine control unit. So um, with that, um, I will move to the uh, um, uh, the IC system overview, uh, which basically, uh, again, when combustion occurs within the combustion chamber, ions are produced. Um, ionization sensors pick the ion current signal and pass it uh, to the ion processing unit. The ion processing unit um, is a volume production electronic module that captures and processes the ion current signal in real time. It also contains algorithms to calculate important combustion and emission parameters from the processed ion current signal. And it's also uh, capable of communicating those combustion and emission parameters, such as start of combustion timing uh, in crank angle degree, C50, uh, burn duration, misfire count, knock uh, peak pressure and knocks and sweat per engine cycle on a cycle-by-cycle -cycle basis. 
um, and send those information to the engine control units through various communication protocols. Um, this process enables the engine control unit to take informed decisions for combustion feedback control to achieve better fuel economy, uh, better performance, and less emissions. Thus, our service would include uh, uh, a custom-made uh, uh, spark plug for gasoline engine, a custom-made glow plug for diesel engine, and uh, the ion processing unit, which has all the uh, algorithms to decode the signal and send those useful information about the combustion to the engine control unit. So, um, as John mentioned, um, there, has, there has been um, uh, lots of uh, investigations about the ion current signal in the past, but what makes us different? Um, so, I'll, I'll start with the spark plug, um, spark ignition engines. Um, uh, conventional combustion ionization systems uh, actually use the sparking electrode uh, of the conventional spark plug as an electrode to measure combustion ionization. So first, an ignition command is provided to the ignition coil, um, through the ignition coil to, the, to start the charge uh, uh, or to start the ignition process, followed by the actual arc generation at the end of the spark discharge event to ignite the air-fuel mixture and initiate the combustion process. Then there is um, a switching circuit. Uh, then there is a switching circuit that um, uh, switches between combustion or ignition functionality to ionization functionality. And all of these, all of the above, which is charge, discharge, and the switching circuit, all of these um, produce electromagnetic field of high frequency and voltage and causes interferences or EMI noise, which distort the ion current signal and masks all the important parameters that we are capturing with our patented designs. Also, ionization measurement is not feasible during the ignition process since the spark electrode is connected to the ignition circuit only uh, to ignite the charge and then switching to ionization measurement. So in order to enable combustion ionization measurement simultaneously with igniting the air fuel mixture the patented design of the spark plug combustion ionization sensor encloses a, a dedicated EMI shielded ion current sensor away from the sparking core so that both functionality can, can be performed at the same time with a very noise-free signal that is indicative of the combustion process. So, for example, here um, you can see on the, uh, on the right-hand side of the, uh, of the presentation there is a, a graph that shows uh, incident pressure signal, which is represented in the black trace, showing that there is combustion happening inside the combustion chamber, um, and ion current signal measured using the conventional ionization techniques of the spark plug, the old systems, um, and represented in the blue trace, which has a lot of noise affecting the ion current signal and masks important information about the ion current signal while the red trace actually is from our new patented designs, uh, which eliminates all the uh, EMI interferences affecting the ion current signal. Thus, you get a really um, uh, noise-free combustion ionization signal representative of the combustion event and away from any ignition um, noise. So in order to test um, such um, new designs, uh, we have actually fitted our ion sensors in, a, uh, in one of our testing vehicles. Um, and this testing vehicle uh, was tested on the road. It has a, a two liter turbocharged engine uh, with a 9.2 uh, compression ratio and um, a specific engine specifications as shown. Uh, we've been testing this on the road and also on uh, Axel Hub Dyno uh, where we can simulate road load conditions. And the results are quite um, um, impressive. I'm going to go through the, the, um, um, the experimental setup first of this testing vehicle. Basically, um, the ion processing unit is being the center or the brain of the um, uh, ionization system, which decodes all the signal of ionization and translates it into combustion parameters. 
It's being connected to a spark plug ion sensor to measure ionization system, uh, ionization signals. Um, it's been connected to ignition uh, coils so that um, it would actually um, uh, 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 determine when is the time for the combustion. It's been connected to camshaft and crankshaft position sensor to determine engine speed. Uh, and it's also connected to um, man manifold absolute pressure uh, in order to determine the different boost um, uh, pressures. And at the bottom of the screen, you will be able to see uh, two systems or two outputs that we can provide from the ion processing unit, which basically is um, raw ionization signal that goes directly um, to engine control unit, and it has a 0 to 3.3 .3 volt signals. Um, and uh, on the other hand, um, you can see the interface um, decoding all the signals on the CAN bus or an Ethernet. Um, and um, reading ionization data from one from each cylinder and outputting all those information on the CAN bus so that the engine control unit would um, listen on the CAN bus and take um, the um, informed decisions. Um, so in order to or uh, in order to test this vehicle further at our testing facility we uh, located in Waterford, Michigan, the vehicle is actually, as you can see on the screen, is coupled to uh, uh, eddy current axle hub dynos that would provide load loading on the vehicle wheels to simulate different road load conditions. Combustion and emission test bench equipment have been available to perform combustion and emission analysis, uh, which would also be needed um, um, to show the differences and to show how close is the uh, or how accurate is the data that uh, we are operating um, through the canvas. Um, um, such test equipment, uh, such as uh, in-cylinder pressure transducer within the engine cylinder head, <clears throat> um, having the pressure transducer at the, um, at the same cylinder where the ion sensor was fitted, um, high-speed intake manifold absolute pressure sensor, uh, combustion analyzer data acquisition system, which is connected to the pressure transducer, um, and fuel flow meter and NOx sensor. All of these um, uh, equipment was um, instrumented in this vehicle to show the merits of using the ion sensor versus the very expensive lab equipment. Then I'm going to go through some of the exemplary application, um, such as misfire detection. Um, so the first application here, which is misfire detection, um, in order to show misfire detection capabilities using the ionization system, a simple manual switch relay circuit is installed to interrupt the ignition command providing, uh, provided from the ECU to the uh, ignition coil to initiate the combustion process. This way we can disable any cylinder and um, show that there would be no combustion happening. So uh, as you can see here on the video, uh, there would be cycle by cycle traces shown in, uh, from the combustion analyzer. You can see combustion pressure uh, in the yellow trace. You can see injection command in the uh, orange trace, ignition command in the CN light blue trace, and iron current signal in the red trace. And uh, when the switch to induce misfire is pressed, the ignition command is interrupted, um, and combustion um, uh, is no longer there. So when combustion is interrupted, iron current signal goes to zero, indicating that misfire is detected within those cycles. Um, and also the pressure transducer shows the same behavior, which shows uh, motoring pressure only uh, during those misfire cycles. Um, uh, at the bottom here, there is analysis that has been done just to show the merits of using the ion sensor. And um, um, basically, uh, the, red, the blue trace here shows the um, um, IMFT data, which is um, showing um, also peak, uh, sorry, peak pressure data to show uh, um, uh, misfire cycles. So basically when misfire happens or the ignition is um, interrupted, the peak pressure actually drops to motoring pressure. And uh, as you can see on those cycles, at the same time, you can see on the gray, in the gray trace here, that our iron processing unit is showing that a DTC code or a diagnostic trouble code saying that that specific cylinder has been misfiring in those um, uh, cycles. 
So with this, we can we can uh, achieve 100% accuracy of misfire, misfire detection and also uh, detect misfire from the very first cycle that it happens, unlike other uh, systems, which actually uh, needs to have like 50 cycles of misfires in order to report on the diagnostic trouble codes to say that specific cylinder is actually misfiring. So with 100% detection, we can uh, provide those information on the canvas. Um, similarly, not just uh, misfire, we can also report the crank angle degree uh, in the cycle where combustion actually happened. As you can see here on the screen in the middle, pressure data versus ionization data show that these are normal combustion cycles. Uh, you can see that the pressure rises to uh, compression pressure, and then uh, combustion happening uh, at the later stage uh, represented here in the second hump in the pressure trace, while the ion current signal is showing a very similar behavior uh, without the compression, of course, um, showing that combustion is happening at a certain crank angle degree. Uh, sometimes combustion happens very late due to um, uh, catalyst catalytic converter heating uh, or any other reason, uh, you can see that the pressure transducer um, missed those cycles while um, our ion sensor is actually reporting that there is a flame that's being propagated in, um, during the exhaust stroke, which is very useful to, de de to determine in crank angle degree with, um, uh, at which time did the combustion start so that you can get more information or understanding about uh, catalytic converter heating. While uh, also um, misfire, the pressure transducer is, did not distinguish between a late combustion cycle or a misfire cycle, while our ion sensor is able to tell whether the flame is propagating inside the combustion chamber or not. Another application for gasoline would be the knock detection, which is uh, a very important parameter that needs to be monitored and uh, mitigated because it causes um, engine damage. So um, you know that uh, uh, for most engine guys, um, knock occurs when the pressure and temperature increases inside the combustion chamber to, ex to the extent that the compressed charge reaches auto ignition temperature. So it's a not controlled combustion, um, uh, unlike the normal combustion where the spark ignites the charge and the flame propagates. This uh, the knock actually happens in the reverse direction. And, um, the charge actually reaches auto ignition temperature and start the ignition process um, uh, uh, uncontrollably. So um, with this, uh, as you can see on the screen here, there's a, there is a normal cycle of uh, uh, combustion, which is represented in red traces of the pressure transducer and the ion current signal, while there is another knocking cycle, which was recorded with using both uh, the systems represented in the blue traces. And um, you can see that this um, the knock frequency could be obtained uh, based on the maximum uh, amplitude of ion oscillations, um, uh, which is affecting the ion current signal, which is basically those high frequency ripples affecting the ion current signal and also affecting the incident of pressure transducer. So on a volume production, the ion sensor would provide a very cost-effective solution to uh, report engine knock. Also, it could be a calibration. Um, um, it could be a calibration parameter for engine calibrators to know what's the knock limit for each specific engine at uh, different operating conditions. So, on the left-hand side, you can see the maximum oscillations um, or in the ion current signal. Um, uh, versus the CA50 in crank angle degree. On the right-hand side is the same, but from the insulin of pressure transducer. And you can see that reporting a very similar behavior while um, reporting that after, uh, if, if ignition or the CA50 is being um, advanced more than 20 crank angle degrees for that specific cycle, um, you can see that both the ion system and the pressure transducer system are reporting that um, engine knock started to happen. So uh, again, this is a very, very good solution and a very cost-effective solution to uh, report misfire and knock and uh, combustion parameters on the cycle-by-cycle -cycle basis. 
Um, other applications such as combustion and emission parameters. So for the sake of testing this vehicle, uh, we ran this vehicle on the actual hub um, in speed control mode, which is basically taking the engine from um, 2,000 RPM, 2,500 RPM, 3,000 RPM, and so on. And at each speed, we are actually up, um, uh, increasing the engine load by uh, putting um, uh, more on the throttle position so that um, the engine would actually go from no load condition to full load condition, and then come back, shift to another speed, take it from no load condition to full load condition, and so on. This way we can cover all the possible scenarios uh, of the calibration table of the stock ECU. And um, after the calibration process, um, we are able to report data such as um, IMAP, which is basically engine load. Um, you can see on the red trace here, IMAP reported by the ion sensor, while IMAP reported from the pressure transducer is on the blue trace. And of course, the X axis here is the cycle number. So at different cycles, different speeds and loads, uh, we can have a very good correlation or a very good accuracy of uh, determining IMAP or engine load um, um, compared to the very expensive lab equipment. And uh, we can reach a linear regression coefficient that goes up to 98%. Similarly, uh, peak pressure is reported in bars. Um, uh, so peak pressure reported by the ion sensor is in red trace again. Uh, peak pressure by the pressure transducer is in the blue trace. Again, a very good match between the two, both the systems uh, at different operating speeds and loads. Um, burn duration, um, NOx, all of these information could be correlated to very expensive lab equipment and have it in a single sensor that's, um, that's being uh, tested and um, uh, uh, fitted in each cylinder uh, combustion engine driving on the road. Um, with this, I would go to um, compression ignition engine uh, so that we can show some of the merits to use ionization data on um, diesel engines, for example. Uh, so for this, uh, we have been testing um, a 4.5-liter turbocharged um, uh, diesel engine. Um, um, and for this, we have been running multiple different types of fuel. Basically, you can see here at the bottom, you can see a red trace of the pressure signal, ion current signal in the black trace, and start of injection timing in the green trace. You can see that the peak pressure was about 35 bars, while one of the engineers actually switches between one of one type of fuel being injected against another. The first fuel was ultra low sulfur diesel and then switching to sasol. Sasol is a very low cetane number fuel um, that uh, requires more time for the air, for the fuel to heat up, uh, warm up and uh, uh, evaporate and mix with the air and then start the combustion. And as a result of that, the ECU is running blindly. It doesn't know uh, what type of fuel is being injected. So the fuel is being burned at a very late uh, crank angle degree as represented in the ion current signal and the pressure transducer. This, the peak pressure actually has dropped from 35 bar to 20 bar. Um, you, this means that the engine is suffering. It's losing power. Um, it's uh, injecting fuel that's not burned um, it's bad for emission and performance. Um, so we repeated the same experiment again, but this time we controlled the start of um, um, the injection timing, which is represented in the green trace, so that the ECU or the programmed ECU would uh, keep the ion current signal at the same location, uh, which is near top that center, whatever type of fuel is being injected. Basically, the ECU would advance or retard the start of injection timing based on the ignition delay period that is detected by the ion current signal. And thus, um, this actually provides a very good or a, a, an effective solution to have multiple types of fuel being injected uh, while having the peak pressure maintained and also engine performance and fuel economy at the same levels without having engine suffering or um, or having a lot of emissions on the tailpipe. Uh, one last application, uh, uh, similar to the gasoline engine, uh, we have a 5.2 liter turbocharged um, um, uh, high pressure EGR engine, 
We took this engine, uh, put it on a dyno. We designed, uh, did all the design and development and fabrication of the glow plug ion sensors, as you can see on the screen, um, and fitted this on an engine uh, in an, uh, on an eddy, eddy current dyno and um, um, fitted an in-cylinder pressure change reducer with a glow plug ion sensor in the same cylinder so that we can um, report both and compare both the sensors. Uh, there is a fast NO machine that was uh, installed in the same cylinder, in the exhaust port of the same cylinder, and also an opacity meter that was um, installed in the exhaust tailpipe. So all of these are there to compare the data that we are um, acquiring from the ion sensor versus the data against the, the very expensive lab equipment. Again, more pictures of the test setup um, is available, uh, as you can see on the screen. And um, for this experiment, again, the ion processing un unit being the center, um, uh, manifold absolute pressure sensor signal uh, is fed to the ion processing unit, crankshaft and camshaft position signals also, Injection timing uh, was also fed to the ion processing unit, and of course, the glow plug ion sensor uh, feeding signals to the ion processing unit so that the algorithms would actually decode the combustion signals into combustion parameters uh, to engine control unit. And for for some calibration purposes, uh, um, uh, internal the pressure transducer is uh, also fed to the data acquisition system so that we can compare the data between ion processing unit versus these expensive lab equipment. Um, here is a picture or uh, a video of the interface, uh, which basically uh, visualizes the ion current signal in a cycle by cycle basis and calculates the important parameters and sends these parameters over the CAN bus uh, to engine control unit. And the result is quite uh, impressive, as you can see. This is ion current signal in a cycle by cycle basis in, in the blue trace. While operating the engine in different load and speed conditions, uh, you can see the data from the ion sensor in the red trace versus the data from the expensive lab equipment on the black traces. No matter what the engine goes uh, in different engine operating condition, high load or low load, uh, high speed or low speed, all the information are matching and uh, providing a very good uh, and reliable solution to measure ionization data or combustion data on a cycle-by-cycle -cycle basis. So um, um, for a summary for this experiment, you can see we took the engine from 1,000 RPM to 2,000 RPM, and at each um, RPM, we're uh, keeping the speed constant and taking the engine from no load condition to full load condition. You can see that the data from the ion sensor, which is represented in the uh, red traces uh, for both the peak pressure and soot, um, correlates very, very good with the very expensive lab equipment, which is the pressure transducer in the blue trace and the opacity meter in the blue trace and above uh, in, in the graph above. Uh, linear regression coefficient was calculated and found to be about 94% um, for the peak pressure and about 84% for the soot. Um, so with this, I would um, uh, end the technical discussion uh, or end the technical presentation um, with a summary of um, having the ionization system. Um, it's, um, it's a cost-effective solution, of course, for volume production to be used on gasoline and diesel engines. To, uh, it's a multi-sensor that can interpret combustion and emission parameters uh, on a cycle-by-cycle -cycle basis. Um, it, it enables multi-fuel operation. Um, it is also there to detect misfire and knock. Um, of course, no need to build another hole to fit expensive lab equipment inside the combustion chamber um, because the ion sensors would do the same um, uh, same job uh, with with the help of the unique uh, physics and chemistry based uh, algorithms that are embedded inside the ion processing unit.